This is the final part of our video about the birdhouse. If you haven't watched the first part, make sure you watch it first. We have a whole nest of tiny pink chicks. The mother bird has brought a large caterpillar and fed it to one of the chicks. But it was so big that it got stuck in its throat. For a while, it struggled with it, but nothing worked. Exhausted, it fell to the bottom of the nest, its color becoming paler, it might have been choking. But later, the mother came back and removed the stuck caterpillar. You might ask, how did the chicks defecate? Did they just do it all over themselves? No, actually, nature thought of everything, and after feeding, some chicks would climb over the other and expel white feces neatly packaged in a transparent casing for the mother to carry out of the nest. Sometimes she just ate them. It's honestly incredible how chicks just one day old and blind know how to do this. And if it weren't for this casing keeping everything together, they would simply sit in this mess and become infected with bacteria and other diseases. Two days later, the chicks had noticeably grown, and I observed some sort of extrasensory abilities in them. Often, they seemed to sense their mother was flying towards the nest with food and would lift their heads, opening their beaks long before she appeared in the entrance. Although often some of them needed to be awakened with specific sounds signaling it was time to eat. To help the family of tits, I built this simple feeder with a rain protector from three pieces of wood. Even if the tits don't feed their chick seeds, at least they themselves could snack on this high calorie food. Plus, I was curious to see how they shell sunflower seeds. Turns out they grip the seed between their feet and peck off the outer shell to extract the nutritious kernel piece by piece. The larger the chicks became, the longer their mother could leave them in the nest because they could now keep each other warm. And they weren't as cold. After a while, the chicks started to sprout the beginnings of adult feathers, which would soon cover their entire bodies. Later, the chicks' eyes began opening. Every day, their mother had to bring more and more food for their offsprings, who would pop up with open beaks demanding to be fed. Over time, they occupied more and more space in the nest, and sometimes their mother had to land right on top of them and fly off immediately for another portion of food. At this point, my memory card ran out of space, forcing me to approach the birdhouse, replace the card and clean the camera lens from dust. This was the first time I saw the chicks in person, rather than through a camera's view. A few days later, the chicks had significantly grown and increasingly resembled adult birds. However, their heads still had funny Batman-like ears made of baby fluff. Their eyes were fully opened, they were more active, made noises and seemingly communicated among themselves. When their mother flew into the nest, they all sprang up, making it look like some sort of an explosion. At times, there were moments when the blue tit returned with the prey almost every minute. I couldn't figure out where she was able to find a caterpillar or butterfly so quickly. Look at this enormous and terrifying spider she brought. But instead of being scared, the chicks left only a spider leg in the adult tit's beak. After a hard working day, she spends a few minutes grooming herself before sleep and preparing for the next day. One day, I observed their first wing flapping exercise. They need to train their muscles in order to fly out of the nest soon. Every day, they became more mature, communicating with each other or even seemingly arguing at times. There was very little space left in the nest, and their mother was no longer staying in the house at night, but slept somewhere else. Seventeenth day in the nest, the chicks are now very large and hardly differ from an adult blue tit, except for their behavior and yellow beaks. 
They are curiously peering out of their hole and exercising their wings more often. In order to capture beautiful footage of their mother outside the cage, I often had to spend many hours sitting with a camera observing the nest. At one point, I noticed a larger bird with a long sharp yellow beak near the birdhouse. It sat on a branch next to the birdhouse and stared intently down the entrance, seemingly preparing to attack it. The mother bird was flying around and screaming, trying to scare it off, but that didn't stop the bird. It leapt towards the entrance of the birdhouse, apparently trying to pull one of the chicks out, but it failed and immediately flew to a nearby tree. The chicks initially thought it was their mother, but when they saw the huge bird at the entrance, they immediately settled at the bottom and froze, making no sound. Look at their frightened faces! Later, after reviewing the video, I realized that it was one of the members of the Starling Gang, who often put on a singing show near our house in the evening. I don't know whether the starlings pose a danger to the blue tits and their offsprings, but that moment was tense. That very day, I also saw a magpie near the nest, but it didn't dare to attack the birdhouse. Then, the big day came. At 6 in the morning, the tit flew into the birdhouse as usual, but this time without food. It seemed to be communicating something to the chicks. Then it flew out and started peeking into the window to encourage them. In some inexplicable way, they understood it was time to leave the nest and started fighting each other for the chance to fly out first, literally pushing each other off the entrance. Everyone wanted to sit in there, but no one dared to take the flight. Later, the bravest of them all finally left the nest. A few minutes later, the second chick flew out. Then a bit of chaos ensued, during which the third chick was jostled out. The fourth one tried to be stopped by its sibling, but it didn't work out and it bolted to the exit. Only three chicks were left. This one seemed to be in no hurry at all. One more flies away, and then another one. They all took off within a span of 20 minutes, but the last chick remains alone, showing no hurry to take the flight. Perhaps it feels weak and needs to gather strength. For several minutes, it sat at the bottom of the birdhouse in silence, but then gathered all its strength, practiced a bit and climbed to the edge of the hole. It sat there for 20 minutes. Look at its heart pounding with fear. But it finally did it and took flight into adulthood. This is the picture of the empty nest that I found when I woke up in the morning. I was really scared when I looked out the window. I saw no one but a big fat cat under the birdhouse. I was terrified thinking that it had eaten them. But the next morning, I heard the familiar sound of the chicks and found that they all had flown to the tree next to the birdhouse, hopping around somewhere in the foliage. The chicks just sat on the branches and fluttered their wings, while their mother hunted on the neighboring trees and brought them food. Turns out after leaving the nest, parents still feed their offsprings for a while and teach them how to hunt and survive. It's a pity that I didn't manage to film them flying out of the nest from the outside. But I will try to improve the birdhouse, add an outdoor camera and make another attempt next year.